Hi friends, Mr. Ben here, and today for Science Explorers, I want to introduce you to a man named Percy Julian. Now, last week we talked about Neil deGrasse Tyson, and I would imagine that many of you probably already know this individual, but I would imagine that Percy Julian is not a name that you're familiar with. So here's a picture of our friend Percy Julian, who, as you can see by the picture and by the words up on my board, he was a chemist. Now, he was born on April 11th in 1899 in Montgomery, Alabama. He was the son of a mail clerk who was the son of a slave. So he was not far removed from that unfortunate history in America. So he graduated the valedictorian of DePaul University despite the fact that he had inadequate high school, uh, an inadequate high school education. Uh, this is a time when black Americans were heavily persecuted. They did not have a fair shake. They did not have... Um, you know, equal opportunities here. So it's, it's actually amazing that he was able, able to go to high school. And then not only that, graduating valedictorian from his university, going on to get a master's degree from Harvard. And then there are just so many accomplishments to his name that there's just, there's just too many to name. But one of the things that he is known for, and I just want to look, he was able to synthesize phytostigmine which was only be uh, able to be naturally uh, derived. He was able to synthesize that in a lab so they didn't have to get it from a natural source anymore. And this is used to treat glaucoma. And that's just one of many different accomplishments that this man had. So as a chemist, he worked with chemicals and did chemical reactions and experiments. And so today, I wanted to just do a simple acid-base reaction, one that we're all very familiar with. But I want to just talk a little bit about how we prove some of the things that we know about these chemical reactions. So. We have our acid here, white vinegar, and we have our base here, baking soda. And so, as the experiment goes, you will add a little bit of baking soda into a cup or a volcano. And you might add a little bit of food coloring to add a little flair here, but we're just going to, just going to do our experiment here. And so, what happens when you mix an acid and a base together is you get a chemical reaction and you get different products. Okay, so let's take a look at what happens. And here we go. And as we can see, we get it to kind of bubble out and over. Uh, so what we've done is we've changed those acids and those bases. We've mixed them together. They've chemically reacted. And now we get water. We get a salt, like table salt, but there's many different kinds of salt. And we also get a gas. Now you can kind of see the gas in the bubbles, but we really want to kind of prove that there is a gas coming out of there. And we can do that by capturing that gas in a balloon. So we're going to do the experiment again, but we're going to do it just a little bit different. All right, I'll set this off to the side. And here I'm going to use a bottle. All right, and the reason I'm using a bottle is because I can capture that gas inside of a balloon with this narrow neck. All right, so. Let me get some vinegar in here. Okay. All right, now we have our vinegar in there. Now, to get our baking soda in, we're going to put that inside of our balloon first so that our reaction doesn't happen until we want it to. So I'll use a funnel just like I use with the vinegar. And I will pour some baking soda in here. Make sure it all goes in. We'll get a good amount. All right. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to, keeping the balloon downward, I'm going to stretch this over the top. Okay. So when I'm ready, I'm going to lift the balloon up, dump all the baking soda in there, and then we'll get our chemical reaction. And if there is a gas being released, that means the balloon will blow up all by itself. So let's see. All right, here we go. And oh, look at that. And we have a really good reaction here. Our balloon is definitely blowing up on its own. Oop. Let's not have it fall over. All right. So there you can see that not only did we see it in the bubbles here, but now we've captured that gas in the balloon. We can see for sure that we have a gas in our reaction. Well, friends, thank you for joining me today. That's all I have for you. Um, we'd like to thank National Grid for sponsoring this program. And until next time, friends.